Hey YouTube, Matches860. Smoking my Friday Savinelli with some McClellan 5100 Red Cake. It's a beautiful day outside, but it's very windy. So I didn't want to take, take the uh, chance of having a lot of wind noise going across the microphone. It's always annoying. Uh, this video is for Patrick the Pipe. About a trip I made back in the late 90s up to Vermont to Pima, the pipe making uh, supplier. And at the time I had already made two pipes. My uh, local tobacconist had had a contest. And for like 15 bucks or something you got a briar block and stem. And uh, you carved, carved a pipe and entered it in the contest. I had bought two blocks because I got so excited to smoke them. Uh, they never made it to the contest because they had to be unsmoked pipes. Anyway, 1997, I had a co-worker whose husband was a pipe smoker. And they used to vacation in Vermont. And she and I got talking one day. and She was telling me that her husband was going to retire from the police force. And as a retirement gift, she was having this guy carve a special pipe for him. So, every once in a while we'd get going on this topic and I'd ask her about the person that was carving it. And eventually it came out that the guy also supplied uh, materials for making your own pipes. And I got pretty interested in that. And... Uh, in the autumn of 97, I got that itch to make pipes again. And a weekend came where I had, uh, I guess I was taking a long weekend. My wife and daughter had gone away for the weekend. So I hopped in the car, had a general idea of where I was going. And it was a great ride. Uh, it was like two and a half or three hours from where I live. But it's all uh, rural in order to get there. Farms, uh, woods. I remember it was a cold autumn day. But I packed up a, probably three pipes and a whole load of tobacco and just had a ball. And when I got up to Manchester Center, which is where he's located, uh, surprisingly, the street that he was on was right off of the main highway. So I pulled in And she had told me, uh, the co-worker had told me that he worked, you know, out of his house. That he had a barn for all of his supplies. So, went up and knocked on the door. Guy comes to the door and... I said, I don't know if I'm in the right place or not, but... 
according to my information, you carve pipes and have pipe making materials. Yeah. I'll break here to give you an idea. Um, Al Bear was a advertising executive, had his own advertising company in Boston back in the 80s, 70s and 80s. And in 1983, he sold his advertising business and decided to retire. And his wife, Jenny, had always vacationed up in Vermont. Um, with her family when she was growing up and she wanted to go back. So off they went and uh, at this point Al was already carving pipes as a hobby, doing very well. He was selling pipes also that he made. So I think it was around 1995, the opportunity came up to buy Pimo. So he went for it. So he invited me in this house. And I was giving him the whole story, how I found out about him. And was talking to him about the pipe that he had made for this co-worker of mine. She had had him carve a replica of her husband's badge on the bowl of the pipe. He says, that pipe was a pain in the neck. In order to do the badge properly, he had to make this humongous bowl in order to fit the whole shield on it. And there was a lot of detail work. I think it took him like four months or something to carve it. Which really wasn't unusual because Al was the kind of uh, carver that um, when he took an order, he told you, you know, it may be three months because I work on it a little bit, put it down, work on it some more, put it down. So, I had uh, asked him for two plateau blocks pre-drilled and he ran out to his barn which is where he kept everything comes back in with the two blocks drilled them right there for me <clears throat> while he was drilling one of them I don't know if his bit was uh, dull or what the problem was, but this it just started billowing smoke. He was wearing glasses and he looked over the top of him at me and he goes, I think we got a little fire going over here. I got a big kick out of that. So uh, he did those for me and I pulled out a Peretti pipe that I had brought with me because she told me that he did uh, repairs also. He got a big kick out of that because Peretti's from, it's a tobacco shop in Boston. So he was familiar with that. I had figured I was going to have to leave the pipe with him. But, he said, I can put a new stem on this for you. I said, okay, you know, how much is it going to cost? And surprisingly, he only charged me for the stem. And uh, it was great, because I had another pipe to smoke on the way home. Um, and then while I was there, I knew that he had a book on pipe crafting 
asked him if he had any spare copies, and he did. So, this is the book. Now, he didn't author this book. Um, I guess it was the previous owner of Pimo. But I really wish I had gotten him to sign it. But I had so much going through my head while I was there, and he's got a uh, kind of a little waiting area where he's got um, albums of all the pipes that he's carved and just amazing work. He did a lot of figural stuff. Um, he's most known for his two-headed horse pipe. Unbelievable work. So, I paid him and left. Couldn't wait to get home. And uh, as soon as I got home, I think it was about 5 or 6 o'clock that night, I started working on one of those pipes. Worked right through supper. At one point, looked at the clock. It was 2 o'clock in the morning. I was still working on it. But uh, it satisfied that itch that I had to make a pipe again. So, Patrick, that's my story about going up to Pimo. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks an awful lot for watching.